was the businessman's coup or the businessman's yeah. plot. And uh, there were a bunch of wealthy uh, oligarchs, b businessmen, uh, today we would call them billionaires, who got together and tried to hire Smed General Smedley Butler. They had this uh, veterans organization with a half a million people in it, a uh, hardcore right-wing veterans organization. And they were, they were willing to march on the Capitol and, and seize Franklin Roosevelt and either kill him or hold him hostage and put a good Republican in the White House. And, uh, FDR, and Smedley Butler, the, this Marine general, the most famous Marine general in history at that time, blew the whistle on them. Uh, I, I think I, I've got a clip from FDR here about hate. Let me play this. I'm not sure if this is specifically speaking to that. It's been a while since I've heard it, but uh, just listen along with me. Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. There you go. So, you know, yeah, <laughs> it was a tough time in the 1930s there. Uh, yeah. Why do you bring it up, yeah. Tony? Well, I was just wondering because they... Because they, uh, they were going to start off by saying that uh, it was uh, too much work for Roosevelt. You know, his, uh, they were going to start running newspaper ads that uh, that he was uh, well mentally and physically by the job and stuff oh, like that. Oh, they said all so kinds of terrible weak. things about him. They said he was crazy. Yeah. They said he was a communist. They, I mean, you know, the, the character assassination against Franklin Roosevelt was breathtaking. But it didn't yeah, go very I far because Americans knew, you know, they'd had... They'd had, uh, you know, 12 years of Republican rule through the administrations of Warren Harding, Calvin Coolidge, and, and uh, Herbert Hoover. And they saw what it did to America. It, it gutted the, the American middle class. The roaring 20s were only roaring for the billionaire class. The average working people actually saw their wages go down. Uh, the stock market exploded, but it was a bubble. It blew up in everybody's face, and they, they brought us the Great Depression. Everybody understood it. In fact, up until the 1950s, they called it the Republican Great Depression. When Dwight Eisenhower was elected in 52, they stopped calling it that. Uh, also, Butler, he, he went to Congress with the name names and all that. He did. But when Congress uh, came out with their report, they didn't have the names in there, but supposedly Roosevelt knew, knew who they were, and he called them on the carpet. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of uh, guessing that, uh, in particular, uh, the DuPont family and, and possibly the Rockefeller family were involved in this, but uh, the DuPont was at the top of the list of suspects. But FDR actually shut that investigation down. Congress opened hearings into it, and those hearings lasted a week and a half, and then Franklin Roosevelt went to the Democrats who were running the hearings and said, don't take this any farther. I don't want to give people ideas. I don't want more focus on this. I want people to be focusing on the positive side of our agenda, what we're getting done. I don't want these right-wing cranks to get any more publicity, which is, you know, I think, you know, frankly, 